Good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to be um, demoing how to edit and work with related tables in the collector for ArcGIS application. Uh, this is a fairly new um, emerging um, technology that they've added, recently added to the collector application. Um, it's particularly useful in uh, a lot of local, local government um, applications. Um, so today I'll be reviewing that. Uh, to start with, I was actually going to show a little bit of the version history or the lineage of the application. Uh, this can be particularly useful um, when you are um, trying to research the application, uh, what's compatible with the application, what layers you can edit, what recent enhancements they've added. Because um, you know, with each um, re release of the application, they're adding new enhance enhancements or, fix or fixing uh, issues. So, um, so to start with, so I'm using a um, Apple device, so I'm on a, an iPad, and so I've just searched for a collector for ArcGIS in the App Store. Um, the application is already downloaded on my device, but this is just one one easy way to um, to look up that version history that I was uh, mentioning. So um, if I click on collector for ArcGIS in the top left here, uh, get detail information, what's new, description, what version I'm on. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see this version history. Um, and then it says show version history in blue. If you click that, it'll expand out and show um, each of the most recent um, version updates and some of the fixes and improvements that, the, that uh, Esri has, has uh, enhanced. Um, quite a few of them are just very general in nature. So it says various bugs and fixes for about the last five or six updates. Uh, not particularly helpful on those, although the one I did want to point out is um, the 10.3 collector for ArcGIS update uh, that was in March of 2015. Uh, this is actually where the ability to view and edit related records uh, was added to the application. Um, so it has been a functionality that's available uh, since March. So but still relatively new and um, you know constantly up updating and changing it. So um, and then as you can see underneath the ability to view and edit related records there's other additional uh, detailed information um, that could be useful in your case. But again, I just wanted to show this as it can be uh, a useful resource if you're looking for that type of information. Um, from there, I'm going to go into the setup of my actual data. So for what I'm demoing today, everything that's underscore demo is the actual data that I'll be using um, and showing. Uh, so this is my, my base point feature class. So in this case, it's storm water inlets that are represented by um, point locations. This is my attachment table uh, for for photos that's that's uh, attached to my actual um, my base my base layer here. So that's just a matter of right click, export, and enable attachments. So this one, so these first two are automatically created via that, that, uh, that op option there. Um, the stormwater um, inlet inspection table, uh, I created this manually and populated with specific fields and domain values that, uh, per that pertain to the application I'm using. Um, and then from there, you can actually enable attachments on your related table as well. So it's like another level of having a related table. Um, so in, in this case, I just want to demo that ability because you might want to have the attached photos attached to the actual related records. So in this case, I have it, my related table named inspections, and so maybe it makes more sense to have the photos attached to the actual inspections as opposed to attached to the base, the base um, point feature class, which was what I initially showed here. Um, so again, just kind of showing the, the full range of capabilities. So again, um, on the related table itself, the one that I manually created, you can also do a, a right click manage and then you can add and you can enable um, the attachments, create attachments here. Um, and that's what uh, these two are here, the relationship and then the attached photos to the related table, which is inspection. Um, and then here is the uh, relationship that I, that I manually created to relate the the related table the inspections to my base stormwater point locations. So we'll go into the uh, properties of this, this guy really quick. Um, <clears throat> so 
here's the setup that I have. So the type I have is uh, composite. Um, cardinality is one to many, so that you can have, um, you know, five related inspections to to one point location. Uh, notifications I have it set to none. Um, my primary and foreign keys I have as the global ID in my base storm monitor inlets, and then in my related table I have I created a GUID field, which is an empty um, field that is formatted for storing global IDs. Um, now what happens is when you when a um, a related record is is created, um, the global ID from your base your base point feature layer gets pushed over into this to this foreign key field, which is GUID. Um, and then they're related that way. So it's kind of just a, a blank field that's ready to be populated. Um, and and uh, Esri, Esri actually recommends using uh, global IDs as your related um, field when setting up um, related records in Collector. So that's what they recommend. And then as far as, let's see, and I think I also chose um, composite up here as because that way when a a base um, feature is deleted, so in this case a stormwater inlet point location is deleted, then the related records and the related field would get uh, deleted as well. So it just, um, depending on your workflow, but in this case that's what made sense. If, if a stormwater inlet location has been removed for whatever reason, then it doesn't make sense to have the related records uh, still in your table. So uh, again, you could alter this a little bit based off of your needs. I just wanted to show that real quick. And then once you're actually ready to publish, um, in my case, I actually published from uh, from desktop 10.3 to server 10.3. And the reason I, I'm using 10.3 uh, is um, the data that I'm using resides in SDE. So it's versioned SDE data. And I also wanted to have the, sync, the ability to sync. Um, to be able to do the offline editing. Now, depending on your workflow, again, you may not need all those uh, functionalities enabled. Maybe you're not planning to do any uh, offline editing, so in that case, you might not need to use the sync, which then you wouldn't have to use 10.3. You could use a previous version of desktop and server, so maybe um, 10.2 or something like that. So again, in, in my case, I'm publishing from 10.3 uh, desktop to 10.3 server. Um, so this is the setup of my data. Um, really, the only difference when publishing um, related records versus just publishing, I guess, a standard map service or feature service is, um, if we go to my the data view, I actually have my inspections table in my table of contents. So um, in addition to my actual um, point feature class that's represented in the storm monitor inlet locations, kind of my base layer, um, I also have my uh, related table in the table of contents too, and that's important because when you publish it, that's how the related records um, get pushed up to ArcGIS Online um, or ArcGIS Server, um, and then I named it accordingly. So in this, and then this is my inspections table, and then I name that accordingly because when the data gets pushed over um, to the other environments, um, that that becomes important. And then from there, I will show, this is my, my uh, web map in ArcGIS Online. And so again, I have my base, my base layer, that's the point feature locations, and then my inspections. Uh, so this name gets carried over uh, from the previous screen that I was showing. <clears throat> if we go into to the configure pop-up settings, you kind of have your, your standard um, interface here as far as what fields you want, how you want them formatted, which ones are visible, which ones are edit editable. Um, you can see as I kind of scroll down, I start to hit these field names that are based off of the relationship uh, class. So you technically can show some of these fields in your, your base um, layer if you'd like, um, if that's important to you. Um, Another thing I was going to point out is you want to have this show related uh, data 
checked. Uh, I believe by default it is checked, but you can always just um, ensure that when you're actually uh, creating your web map here. Uh, this, this is important here, the sort options. Um, these are the fields in my related table, and I have it I have it sorted by the last edited date and then in descending order. And uh, that'll that'll be important once I start demoing the actual uh, collector application. Um, so you you could sort this by any any field that you want. In my case, I wanted them stored in descending order from the last edited date. That way, it's it's um, organized in a in an intuitive manner in the app application itself. I'm going to cancel out of that, and then you can also go into your related table and configure the pop-up, configure the fields in here as well. This, you know, the same idea. What fields are visible, what fields are editable, um, change the field alias to clean up some of that uh, look in the actual collector, collector application. I'm going to cancel out of that. From there, I'll go into demoing the actual application here. So here is my map. I'm going to zoom into this area that I've already been editing in. And actually, quickly, before I create some new data, I'll show you how that, uh, that sort order comes into play in the application and that I was showing in the previous screen in the web map configuration. Um, so I have this particular point location highlighted. And if I scroll down, so this is my standard view of my, my attributes. Um, any, anyone that's used the collector application should be familiar with this. If you scroll to the bottom, then you'll actually start to see um, attachment um, photos and the inspections, which are the related table. So um, the name inspections is intuitive. And that's, again, propagated through from the MXD to the web map and then now into the application. So just a little bit of thought. Um, involved in upfront naming that uh, related table in your MXD and how you want that to show up. Um, if I actually go to view um, under inspection, uh, I've already previously created um, two related records for this particular point location. Um, and I just wanted to show how um, the sort order comes into play. So you can see the way I have the tables named is inspected by and then the inspector's name. In this case, it's just JS, JS2. Um, and then you'll see the, the date that's last ed edited in the small gray text underneath. And it's, and it's um, sorted in an order that's descending order. So you can see the last um, edited related table. Um, so I just wanted to kind of point that out real quick. So if I go and actually try to create some new data, I'll drop in a new location here and say collect here. And then uh, I'll go ahead and start uh, populating some of these attributes. So we have an inlet type, catch basin, invert elevation. Just put uh, 1,200. TDC, we'll say yes. <clears throat> Dimensions, we'll say 5 by 5. And then the inspected by, this is the uh, field for the inspectors that, to manually enter their name, um, just based off of the way I have it set up here. So we'll just say JS1. And then from here, since I have photos enabled on my, my base table, I can go ahead in the top left, I have the uh, photo symbol available. And I'll go ahead and add in photo. And we'll go ahead and take a new photo and attach that. I'll say use photo, and we'll say done. So at this point, we have a new point feature location created, and then I have a photo attached to that. So I'm going to, in the top right, I'm going to say submit. So it's saving and then posting the attachments. I went ahead and saved my data. So if I click back on that point, now I see the attributes that I've just created. Um, so far, I haven't created any related records, which would be what falls under that inspections category. But I do see my 
um, attachment photo, which is the photo I just took. Um, now we're going to create some uh, related records, which I'm calling inspection. So you have the ability to view, which is what I had done previously. Um, but now, in this case, I'm going to say new. So we want to create a new one. So these are the fields that I have available to create for a new one. Um, so we'll say trash amount. We'll say medium. Depth to, depth to debris. We'll say 10 feet. And then, again, in this case, I have it set up where the inspectors manually put in their name or initials. So I'll say JS1. And you'll notice that I uh, have it set up where the, the name of the table is the um, inspector's initials or name. Now, again, that, that would be set up in the web map as far as the, the pop-up configuration. Um, and then in the top left, I again have the ability to attach a photo to the related table, which is kind of like a, a second level of related um, records in your actual in your actual um, MXD or in, in your data, excuse me. Let's say take photo. So now I have a related record created and a photo attached to it. So I'll say submit. And same process as the actual um, base layer, which is the point feature location that I had just done. So now, when I have that same point highlighted, now if I go under view, I should see the related record, which is the inspections that I just created. And then I can click on that, and I'll see the actual attributes and then the photo. So again, you, you might not necessarily want photos attached um, at any of these particular levels. Um, I just thought I would demo that that you can have them attached directly to the related table if that makes more sense in your data editing or your workflow. Um, and we'll go back to inspections. You can always at any time click the box on the right. Depending on how you have the data set up, you could, you could continue to edit that related record or you could delete it. Um, and then as I populate more related records, uh, more of them will uh, show up under inspections. And then if I just click details, I kind of go back to the main, uh, the main screen of the actual inlets. So that is more or less how to create and view and edit the related records in Collector. Um, and that will uh, go ahead and sum up my, my presentation. Thank you.